this. Here. All right, we'll let folks get on. I'll say hey to everybody. Yeah, folks, give me a, uh, a mic check to make sure that I have some rigs running in the background. I'm going to make sure if it's too loud, I'm going to shut them down. If it's not too loud, then we'll go ahead and press. Excellent. Good. I can, st I can still continue to burn while we're uh, doing it. So uh, we're going to get right into it today, and I'll let people can catch up and if you guys can help on the, the chat, uh, just let people know if they ask some basic questions. I'm gonna have, I have a couple other uh, folks assisting too that could probably answer some questions for people, but we're gonna try to get through a lot of content pretty quick. I wanna try to get these BIOSes out to you guys tonight. Um, we got I got everything done. So what, what, what we're gonna go through tonight is just showing you the results. I'm gonna show you kind of how we got there. I'm going to show you the already completed BIOS. I'm going to show you what I did to make the make a couple of these XFX cards sing, essentially. Uh, I'm going to post multiple versions of the BIOS out there. After seeing us posting some of the, the different BIOSes out there, we've been just posting one that's worked for us well. So what I've done is I've made multiple versions with some hard-coded settings in there with GPU and memory clocks. That way it's just plug and play. So you can choose the one that works for you. I'll show you how to kind of... Uh, look through to make sure it is working so if you get like hard stops or faults because the gpus that you got um are not working with the bios that we have you'll have some options so we're going to try to mix that up a bit um from now on and give you guys some options on the bioses and not just say hey that works for me good luck right so um if we can give you guys some different options to try it it should help uh, a lot of different things so um i think we got about 40 in there right now uh that's that's plenty to kind of start to see what we got uh, I kind of threw the rig together after the episode last, the, the last live stream I was trying to do it with the PC. I just wanted to just pull a rig over. That way you guys can see the card kind of in action. And right now what I have in there is the GeForce GTX. We're going to get through this one real quick. And then I'm going to get to the uh, AMD cards. But with, with these being out of stock everywhere, I mean, minus the few stack that I was able to find, um, a lot of the AMD cards are out of stock, so I want to tr I want to try to get some options for people that may be in their area. And the first one that we're really gonna look a, a good heavy at is is a three gig. Now it's three gig, and I know with Ethereum you're still fine. Two gig just came offline. What about six months ago? Uh, three gigs you'll still get some pretty good traction on for a while. If you can get six gigs, I got a couple six gigs coming in next week, and we'll do the six gig version of this too. But the three gigs are pretty cheap. You can still get them pretty cheap on the GTX 1060. Um, and what we're gonna do is, this is a PNY one. This came from Best Buy in the US. Um, and again, you, I think you can get these for anywhere from 189 to 229, somewhere around that. Some of them that are overcharging charge like 259. That's crazy talk, because you can get the, uh, the six gig version for around that price. But uh, it's a pretty low price point. Um, right now with the system wattage, and you can't probably see this right now, but um, the basic system right now is running about 33 watts, so I'm trying to give you a benchmark of what, how much wattage this thing uses, uh, and we'll get into it here. So we'll start with Zcash. Again, this is the, uh, the three gig. I'll kind of leave this up here. PNY, a GTX 1060. Uh, We'll start with Zcash. I'm going to show you my settings that I already have pre-configured on this using uh, the EVGA Precision. Again, like all these things, we'll post out which ones that were uh, tools we're using on our description. I got a basic, this is kind of some playing around with it to try to figure out some good settings. I got a, a pretty decent setting going on right now. It's 110 power overclock, um, target of 88 Celsius, and we'll probably zoom this in. Um, 
on the screen and I'll let you guys see this real quick. Get it moved over. And I'll show you some settings and we're gonna play with a few of these and I'm gonna show you the differences if you do, if you down clock this card. Um, that with these settings here with the plus offset on that 147 about 216 this card actually did a lot did pretty good and uh, pretty good compared to what I thought it was actually going to do so you can see here it booting up here 3 gig 1060 and we'll let this get through um, We'll try to get some links out on the site too to the, these cards, but what what our goal here is tonight is to make sure you guys know that there's options out there, especially around the same price target as the AMD cards. Um, right there, 300 souls, not bad. I mean, you're talking the 1080, which is 529 in cost, is a, you can get in around 500 souls. Um, the 1070s around a little over 410 to 440 souls so 300 is pretty decent and now you're talking about 120 watts of power on that and we again we're overclocking the the power so it took it up to 151 so it's about 120 on the actual card right now with the tdp um but I let this run for a while and, and it stayed just stable. Again, this is no BIOS change on this card. Um, this is just purely what NVIDIA is doing out of the box. Don't worry about that screen. That's the uh, the cable I'm using for the, the HDMI is super heavy and pulls on it. So it makes it go all crazy. Um, if I moved that cable, it got rid of it. Uh, but that's Zcash. If I come in and do Ethereum, We'll let it run Ethereum real quick. This is with Playmore. This is 9.3, uh, I can use 9.4. There wasn't much of a change. I had 9.3 on this system. And we can try it with 9.4, but I'll let you see the Ethereum speed on this card too. And then we'll of course put the stats and the drivers that we had we're using. This is just, we're just using the latest NVIDIA driver. There's nothing special with this. Right there, 20.3. So it's not too bad. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not, winning any races with against like a 570 or 470 um but right now a desperate ties calls for desperate measures on on cards if you can't find anything if you're talking 20.3 that's about 130 130 watts right now um with 35 to 38 of that being on the board and system board um so you're looking just at 100 watts right there uh for the card and that's with the overclock. So, I mean, we can get a, a reading on the DAG and I'll post it on the description. I'll write that down, that way you guys can know and we can calculate when essentially this card will go obsolete, the three gig models. But DAG obsolation for three gig. So in the description, I'll make sure I have that added to where there's a forecast of when that's gonna happen. But for right now, I mean, of course you can use these cards for Zcash, you won't have that worry. Um, but from Ethereum standpoint, I mean, if you're talking, you know, uh, let's do 20.3. On a seven card rig, you're talking 142 mega hash at about right at about a thousand watts of power, or a little less than a thousand actually, about about 960, 960 watts. Now that's with a heavy overclock. I'm going to show you taking this down of how much it affects the Ethereum and how much it affects Zcash. Now we've seen it with the heavy overclock. We're going to take this power target down. To 80, actually we're gonna go down to 70% and see if we can hold it with those those stiff overclocks. 
I applied that. We're going to go back into here. We're going to check Zcash first, and then we'll go to Ethereum and see what the change there. Now, you saw what I was showing you before on how much power wattage usage this was using. And we'll see, this thing was almost 300 souls. It should drop it to about 260, um, but you're gonna use you're gonna use some less power. We'll let it get caught up. Why this is working, I'll look at the, yeah, there it is, 266 souls. Um, power watt from the wall, we're using a 115. So it's about a 15 watt drop, dropping that power. Try to take it down 58. I'm gonna get rid of that. We're gonna apply this. We're gonna relaunch Zcash. I think we can get it down to about, uh, I mean, mind you, again, the boarding system is about 38 watts, 33 to 38 watts. So you're talking getting this card down to 70 watts, which is about what uh, really well modded uh 570 will do or a 470 i get down to about 65 to 70 watts a card and that's essentially about where we're at now 250 souls at roughly roughly 70 watts so Not too bad. Um, on that, we'll check the Ethereum to see how that affected it. So again, this is that, that PNY GeForce GTX 1060 3 gig. Running a 58% power target with GPU and mem clocks up to about almost 150 and then almost 200 over a little over 200 on the memory hardly any effect to ethereum By dropping the power target And we're just at 100 watts, so you're looking right at 70 watts a card and ethereum didn't take a hit So that's exactly what you would want to do. I mean it was a point one I'm not even a point one hit, but that's the kind of settings that you're going to want if you guys get some 1060s. You're going to want that to drop that power target using precision. This is if you're using uh, Windows, which there's a lot of there's limited uh, NVIDIA miners out there for Linux right now that are real stable. So more than likely you're going to be using Windows uh, with this. So get an EVGA precision software setting your settings there getting this and then this is the pny card um we'll show the stats on it but you know you're talking a 20 mega hash rig per so you're talking seven cards roughly 140 mega hash with a total system power usage of on seven cards plus the system at about 790 to 8 840 somewhere around there with this kind of setup so not too bad uh, for, for what we're looking at here. But I wanted to give you guys kind of an option both from Ethereum and for Zcash on a particular card. And what we're going to do is we're going to shut this down. We're going to pull this card out. I'm going to put in the XFX. I'll let you guys ask some questions uh, with, I'll show a, a close up of this, this card. Yeah, you can just go back to me, it's fine. So this is the uh, the PNY. I mean, so from a comparison, this is the new RX 570, R580. So it's a it's a smaller card. 
It's more of like the, the 570 class in size. Single copper heat sink. It's got a back plate on it. Um, the 1060 OC edition. We had that box around here somewhere. Oh, it's right here. Um, you know, you can see the model that this one is. This is the PNY. Again, it was like a Best Buy one. It's nothing. There's no crazy uh, like strict edition or anything like that. Um, but not too bad as an option if if you can't find any uh, EVGA or any uh, of the AMD cards. So the next one that we're going to go ahead and get right into this is the RX 580. This is the GTR Triple X edition. This is the uh, single overclock. I'll show you the box. That way you know which one it is. So this is the exact card that we're going to be going through right now. The big indicator is this little white LED uh, look here. It says o overclocked right here. The Crimson edition looks almost exactly the same. The Crimson Edition Black Edition is almost the same exact box besides that's red. And it'll say SOC, super overclocked. That's your difference. So we're gonna do this card too, so no fear if you guys have that. The white LEDs have a red sticker. I don't know why, it's kind of weird. You'd think the Crimson would have the red sticker, but it doesn't. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this one in real quick. And I already have all the BIOSes done for these guys. So I'm gonna save you guys a lot of time watching tonight and we're gonna get right into it. This will allow us to, to just focus on what's important. I'll show you all the, the different, I'd call it perturbations that I did to try to figure out which, uh, and these cards are not easy. So anybody that has these um, knows that just doing the basic straps doesn't work with these. So I'll show you all the different iterations that we went through to save you guys a lot of time and find one that works. And that's why we we value, you know, when you guys hit the channel, hit our links, do all those kind of cool things that helps us out. You know, we try to do this for you guys. So if this works for you and you're, you have a hundred of these things, you know, you always show us some love. We appreciate it. No, so you'll see this one here. This lights up the white. Um, we'll get zoomed out for you guys. Uh, you guys I guess you can see that. Don't mind the, that. I need to get a new cable for it stops doing that. Put that there for... I got literally like a 50 foot HDMI cable from Monoprice for this and it's just, it's so heavy it pulls on that, makes it all flaky. So, I have two different folders here, we'll probably zoom back in here and get it to where you guys can see this because it's probably going out here. And we'll try to get. I'll. We'll have a spot for you guys to ask questions too. So don't don't fear that nobody's not watching your questions. I'm gonna get this zoomed in. That's what matters right now. Is getting that for you guys so you can see from this list all the different types and settings and stuff that we went through on this one card to figure out the uh, settings for you so what we're gonna show here this one already has what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a folder of the ones that I know are kind of meh. Meh. And we're going to put all the ones that were that in there, besides the original. And right here is what we're going to be uploading for you guys. So, we're... 
I'm gonna actually bring this up for you guys can see. Essentially what we had to do here. So if I point back to that folder in the original. So this card had a little unique thing here where the straps, the first set of straps went to 2000, like most. The second set of straps went to 2250, which is a little strange. So I tried several various iterations of 1500 copy to 2000, 1500 to copy to 2000 here. It blue screened this machine, it wouldn't work right. I tried all these different iterations of different things. So bottom line, the, this 1750, what this BIOS name is, is this is the 1750 timings copied over the top. So under, under the first series of straps, 1500 over 1625, under 1750 and over 2000. And then for the second straps, it's taken 1750 over 2000 and 2250. And then I hard coded memory and GPU to be at the right speeds that were compatible without throwing memory errors using the hardware info to watch and make sure I didn't have anything with memory errors. So we're going to come down here, we're going to open this up, and the one that's running right now that's hard in this card should be the 2000. So I did fixed memory at 2125, 2150, 2175, and 2000. So what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to download all of those and see if your card can handle the 2200 memory forced over clock, you're good. If it can't and you freeze up and you have errors, you can stair step all the way back down just as if you were doing the minor setup and having having the software on the, uh, you know, having to change your different memory settings to find something that's stable. So, we're going to go ahead and start Ethereum with this. Let's see if you guys can see this. Should be able to. This is the XFX. Here, I'll uh, re-show it. The ultra white, ultra bright white, overclocked edition, 588 gig. Yeah, we'll we'll try. I'm gonna get through all of these guys, and then I'll I'll go back to the 1060 if we have some time, and we'll try that that ex, that excessive overclock to the thousand memory and see if we can get 24 out of it. So right here, as you can see, this this 580 running right there, just under 28, holding 28 fine. Um, no, this is only GPU in there, no GPU errors. That's the key part. Now, when I was playing around with this, I did have this running at almost 29, like most 580 should, but I was dumping memory errors. I don't want the memory errors. I don't want stale shares. So the key thing is to try to find a rate that's giving you a pretty decent output at a pretty reduced power rate at with no errors. So we'll let this run for a second. Twenty-seven. Open up. Fuz. Sensors.
and open that up. It, it took some. It dropped to 19 because I had this open as it as it queried this. So we're at about 105 watt, which is a little more than normal. You could still back down the GPU a little more than what I have. I have 1100 on that GPU. You could take it down to 1020, 1088, and drop this down some. Um, but not bad. This this is not not a bad setup. The system watt usage for all of those, you'd be just at uh, on seven cards plus the risers and the board, you'd be just at about nine nine forty on that on a seven card rig, nine fifty. So still under right underneath a thousand watts. The name of the program you check memory errors in. The name of the program is uh, Hardware Info. So if you look up H. If you look this up, HWIN Info 64, we'll put, we'll put the link in there where you guys can get it. And then I run sensors only on that. You check the box sensors only, you hit OK, it'll go and scan the whole bus for everything, and it'll give you CPU details, it gives you all the wattage, voltages, the, the, the disk speeds, GPU speeds, VRM speeds and wattages and, and temps and then you can see the fixed clock right now at 1100 there and you can see the fixed memory clock at 2200 which is a very aggressive memory overclock um, but zero errors like if, if if this thing starts dumping errors or starts artifacting you'll see memory errors pop up here so even if it looks like it's running stable you could be dumping all kinds of memory errors and what will happen is, is that's when you start looking, you start seeing stale shares, you'll start seeing like rejected shares um, because the, essentially the, the equation was off and it just it couldn't process it right. It was getting an, in, an incorrect response and it's just not good and then it also makes the machine kind of unstable. So the, the part of the art of this is making sure you can find something that's a good, a good setting that isn't killing your electricity and allows you that um, to get back. So. That's the overclock, that's the one that we're gonna upload uh, for you guys, we're gonna put all these up right after the stream. Uh, the main reason why I didn't put these as part of the stream right now is I wanna talk you guys through them first versus people just going to grab them and just, just loading them. I wanna make sure people understand which one's which. I just upload them. So with these will be hot upload right after this live stream so you guys that have these cards can do them. Um, I guess we could pull up with uh, the GPU clock underclocked. I don't think uh, Zcash will do very well. That, that was the NVIDIA miner. Actually, there's really no point to doing Zcash on there unless I change the GPU speed. I'm going to get to the other card. I'm going to try to get We'll let you zoom out and then I'll show you guys the other card. So that was the non-Crimson edition. That was the Triple X GTR edition. Another, uh, let you guys see another close kind of close up of that back plate. So it's got a back plate again, red stickers. And again, this doesn't light up at the top. It's kind of like a, a raised uh, XFX logo on it. So that's kind of the difference there on that one. Uh, we're going to use this one next. So RX 580 uh, XFX also. This is the Crimson Red Edition. It's the Overclock Plus. Other difference on that, it's kind of got black labels right here with the white uh, fans. And it's got the uh, it's got a light up here. That's kind of the main differences on that. Now this has a little faster overclock stock. It's got a little faster GPU setting. Um, in addition, I think this one at Best Buy was like too expensive, but it was 289, um, where the other one was 259. So that was kind of a price difference between them. This is a lot faster than using that, that PC, I'll tell you that. Hopefully you guys are okay with the pace tonight 
on this. I just wanted to make this a really quick and precise video for you guys. You can let me know if this is at a good rate to get to the information. I'm trying to increase the speed on that. That's all good. Now we'll get zoomed out a little more and you can see this this card. So this one lights up all red, has the red LEDs, that part right lights up. You guys can see that. So on this one, it was pretty much straight to the point. Um, and I'm gonna have the four settings like I did the other one. Right here, I just did the two. I did 2125 and 2200. Um, well, I'll put the 2150 and the 2175 also BIOSes out there for you guys tonight. Again, this is the 8 gig Crimson Edition. I'm going to get right into this. I'm going to open up hardware. Let that do the sensor scan so you guys can see no memory errors with this BIOS. You can see the GPU clock and the memory clocks, 2200 and 1100. And we're going to get zoomed in back on that. I need a Yeah, I'm reading some of the comments, guys. I can, I've had some of these GPUs running at 33 mega hash too, but I guarantee, I want to see somebody post up where their 33 mega hash has zero errors. Because I haven't yet to achieve the ones that at least dumping some memory errors at 33 mega hash. It's just really taxing the card and you're using a lot more energy to get 33 out of it. I, I want to see those big numbers too, like anybody else, but I'm telling you, it's with no memory errors and it running efficiently, it's going to help you in the long run and it's going to make the rig a lot more stable. It's right here, almost 28 again. So a lot like its brethren here running right there. I think this tickles 28 a couple times. Again, no memory errors is a key part. These XFX look real good. We'll let it run for a sec. Again, we'll let this, uh, we'll get this out to you guys. Uh, I'm seeing, when's the, when's the new ASRock board out? Uh, I'm here in July, but I think they're having issues right now. It, uh, Windows doesn't support more than eight. So you're talking just pure Linux. And I think the board that they showed out on the, out at the uh, conference actually caught fire. So they removed it on day two. So I think they got some work to do on that still. And that was just with eight GPUs running on it. So as you guys can see, this thing's rock solid. And right here, you can see it's it's running about 100, 109. So you know you can get these down to the 570s. You can get down to 70, 80 watts. These ones you can get down to usually 90 to 100. Um, if you want to run at this kind of speed, um, you're going to use a little more more wattage. You're going to get them down to 100, but that's better than the 150 that they normally run at 145, 150 uh, watts. So we're knocking off almost 50 watts by down clocking the GPU and power stage on it uh, to 1100. Um, but again, real rock star stable right there at almost 28. And I mean, it's 
every bit of 28 mega hash right there. Um, and again, you're talking 960 watts for a seven card rig for this kind of setup. So I think XFX did a pretty good job on this. It was kind of a pain to get that those settings dialed in, but you know we went ahead and did that effort. That way you guys didn't have to strain over it. And we'll get these uploaded, these two sets of BIOSes uploaded. Just for any of the people just joining, the BIOSes are gonna be uploaded in the description today. I'm gonna to name them 2200 through 2125 with all the in-betweens. These are separately hard-coded memory settings and GPU settings that work with this setup that we did the testing on. So if, if you put the 2200 and it doesn't work, go down a level, down to 2175, you'll drop just a little bit of uh, like 0.5 mega hash in each one of these drops, but you'll get, you know, get it to where you're stable. So we're gonna start doing that with all of our cards. Yeah, this thing just stopped on me. No memory errors. Didn't reject it. Well, this this particular card might not be stable at 220. Might be this one, so we might be taking this one down to 2175, as it looks like we dropped it. So, this is what I'm talking about. I'm actually kind of glad this happened. So, if it's working, and then it stops on you. Like where it was holding there, even if you didn't have a memory error, but you get a freeze, then take it down a notch. Take it down to a 2175 and then try it again and run a stability test on it. So what we're going to do on this particular one is we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and go through that operation. I'm going to take it down down to another a, a lower setting and we're going to sit there and watch it for a second um, we're going to get this loaded up here and we're going to run this here And since it's already had one pre-programmed, we're going to point to that, that software that's on the desktop here. I got it under the crimson here. This is the one that the BIOS that I was running that looked like it was stable, but then it did a freeze. So we're going to take it down to 2125, and then we'll edit uh, 2150 and 2175. But we're going to do this, and we're going to program this one. We're going to take it down. It's okay if it, I mean, hey, if it fails, it fails sometimes. It's, uh, it's what happens. It's all like kind of a, a lottery on what kind of stability you get on some of these cards. And sometimes you have to run different BIOSes on them or you have to run a little different settings on them. But the key part is is getting getting them stable and getting them rock solid. It's super frustrating if you have to keep touching it. So you want to try to find settings that are individual for the cards if you have to. But once you get that dialed in, you got like some of our rigs here where I don't touch them. I turn them on and they as long as power's up, they're up and I never touch them. That's the kind of art to get them in that way. And that's worth gold after you get that done. But this is the kind of testing that we try to go through and get this done. Alright, so that's up. We're going to launch hardware info because I want to watch, I want to make sure the memory and all that locks in at the right rate. It's exactly what it's supposed to do. So we got 1,094, 1,096 here. That should go to 1,100, and then this is 2,125. So right there, 27. It dropped a full mega hash by dropping it to 2,125. 
but we're going to let this run for a little bit and make sure it's full stable. So you can see the net change on those two different BIOSes. I'm actually really glad that that happened because I wanted to show you that of just reloading it. So essentially that's exactly what you're going to do when you download these BIOSes if, if you have these cards. You're going to download all four of them and you can start at the top. Or you, you can start either way. You can start at the bottom and work your way up. You can start at the top real quick and find out if it's stable or not. Watch it. Let them run for a little bit. And, you know, I know if you got got 100 cards, you're going to spend some time. But it's worth the time. You could go ahead and deploy it to all the, all your 100 cards if you have 100 cards. Um, but you're going to spend a lot of time pulling cards and fixing stuff versus just kind of go through them once, do a 10-minute a test on them. If it makes it through the 10-minute test, do the next card and just work, work, work your way through a six-card rig, get it going, let it run. Let it run overnight and check it. Make sure that it's stable at those rates. You make it through a few nights without any reboots, you're good. So it went from 27.9 to 26.9 just from 75 megahertz on the memory. All right, this is going. I'll answer some questions if you guys want to go. We'll let this run for a second. Uh, the Asus Prime 270A, I mean, that's, that's, uh, watch that video that we did on the A slash AR, it's the same settings on those, and then we walked through it pretty, pretty, uh, implicitly. Uh, I'm reading your message, Bob, I have a 250, I won't mind on multiple cards. Exact same machine, runs fine, each card riser runs on its own, but multi-crash. Using SMOS, that's simple mining OS I'm assuming. Blueberry J, I did not get any 1050i's, we'll do that next week. Uh, Bob, on your issue, if it's oh, simple mining OS, okay. Uh, are you running stock settings, Bob? Reggie James, we put that BIOS on the last video. If you look down there, I added it to the description for the F R X XFX RX 570s. I put that BIOS out there on that last one. Clash of Doge, yes, 27.4 is pretty decent on uh, 480. Married, we just did the 1060 at the first, um, but I'm going to put it back in here in a second and we're going to try some more advanced overclocks on it. So hang tight, I'll do it. You're going to see it again here in a second. I have a 1070 here. If there's time, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, Bob, just send me all your all the stats that you're using, all the card types, your memory, your uh, your power settings to our email, and I'll I'll give you a more elaborate response. I got a couple different options for you to try. Well, it looks like we had another another death. Almost exact same amount of time too. We 
this video should be mod in the BIOS on each of us. I'm seeing if this is killing the killing the job or if it's killing the driver. Um, which video is which one? Showed modding the BIOS on each of us. Where we talked about that We didn't mod a BIOS in EthOS. I show how the EthOS setup. Eth, uh, to mod a BIOS in Linux is a different video. We'll have to make a different video for that. But that's essentially command line using the ATI, the ATI flash tool. Um, yeah, that killed the driver. Yes, you can. So what I'm going to try right now with this one is to see if maybe this, I'm going to try, I have two of these ones. I'm going to try the other BIOS on that and see if I can get it to die. It might be just this crimson card doesn't like that setting. Another one over here. That's the hot one. That's the cool one. Well, this might be a good example of one that has a card that does not like a lot of the the more uh, aggressive settings. When I get cards like that in full rigs, sometimes I'll go just straight to stock BIOS with just timings and no overclocks. You'll take just the normal bump to 25 and a half hash, and that's just the way it'll be. The card really isn't made to do the memory overclock. You see that a lot with the older, the cheaper cards, where they're the non-bend version of the memory. You'll see that like with the 460s and smaller cards. We'll try this. This is another uh, Crimson Edition. So I'm going to push that BIOS to this one. We'll let it run for a minute, and then we're going to switch back to the 1060 uh, and kind of close it out with uh, trying an advance overclock on the 1060. Um, and if we get good, if we get some, uh, if we get some extra time, I'll pull the the 1070 over. Call this card two. Save load. We'll flash it straight to the twenty two hundred on this one. Um, with Windows, you're not going to get more than eight. Um, you could technically go more in Linux, but AMD is supposed to be working with ASRock on that that 13 GPU board about working on some drivers that'll work and page to that many cards. So we'll see if they can actually get that accomplished. But for now, I target you know seven to eight card rigs. This is another card using the uh, twenty-two hundred.
pull it. I don't think it has to do with the OS more than it has to do with the driver for the OS. let this run for a cool second here. Oops, I hit the down button here. So while that's running, I'll pull a, a 1070. pull over a uh, Zodiac 1070 that we have and we'll try that after this one's done. Actually, did this thing didn't even... One that's not working is what's, what it looks like. I did not like that, uh, so that, that, uh, I don't think that 2200 uh, is working on this one. That's too aggressive of a setting. It got one click and then it said nope. We're gonna go with the 2125 reboot it program. I'm still providing all of them because you guys might have some unicorns that can handle 2200 uh, overclock. 2125 usually works fine on 480s though. RX 580s. 2150 memory is kind of the sweet spot. Program, restart. We'll let that restart. I'm going to pull the Zodiac over. This one run for a minute. So we'll try this one. This beast is the Zodiac 1070. This is almost this is a three din card. This thing is massive. It's ridiculous. Uh, lights up, RGB. Push the limit. Hmm. I mean, you can see how thick that thing is. It's ridiculous. So this is a 1070, it's about the, the top tier of 1070s.
see if that thing keeps going. We're getting one out of it. There's another one. I'll make one more setting for you guys too, looking at this just in case if one of these cards like that other one that didn't work with 2170 or 2125, uh, I'll make a 2100 setting also. So you have a total of the uh, five total settings for uh, your, your speeds. So we'll do that. Looks like that one's stable at 26. On this one, I'll set them both at around that rate. And what we'll do now is we'll switch gears. We'll get those posted. We'll get all those five BIOSes per card posted for you guys on these XFX. And again, like I said, just like I was doing there, you know, start from the top, see if it's stable, work your way down it until you find one that works for your series, of, your set of cards. And don't get them confused. I'm going to make sure that I put them in separate sections in the BIOS to where there's two different XFX cards here. So if you have this card and you're watching, they're different. So make sure you grab the right BIOS. Um, I'll make sure I label it. I was gonna show this little piece here. This was the other cool thing about XFX, if anybody has seen. If you've just seen, I removed the fan. They have slots in both of these series of cards to where you replace the fan. Somebody was thinking there. So you can just click two little buttons there and the fan pops out and you can you can buy replacement fans for these really quickly. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that on these cards before. But I'll do it again, kind of close. There's two little tabs there, you push them in, you lift that right up and replace the fan. Because these things go out, and I think XFX got tired of people sending in their cards. So they had a little uh, adapter piece to put your fans. This one does the same thing. So you can swap your fans out. It's the other model, same thing. Both fans. Just kind of a Cool little cool and easy way to do that so what we're gonna try next real quick to show you guys now this is kind of an expensive alternative I'll show you the box to this one this is the zodiac it's a, like a it's massive I mean, actually I don't even know if I can find the box it's probably buried here mm, founders Might be behind this one. I want to try to make sure I, you guys see the right box. Yeah, here we go. Hidden under, hidden behind. So don't be fearful of the price here. This was not the price that they are now. But when they first came out, they were not cheap. So this is the GTX. 1070. This is the Extreme Amped Edition. This is like the top 8 gig 1070 you can get. Like the most overclocked, craziest setup. The original MSRP on this card was 529, which they are on. I don't even know what they were thinking on that kind of price. I know I did not pay that for this, but it didn't pay too much less. Probably 470 maybe. 479 something like that but this was a very expensive 1070 uh, so this is kind of probably not an, it's probably an unfair test to other 1070s but I mean that's got like like quadruple 
pipes in uh, that card. get this guy locked down it is not a light card either it's pretty heavy actually now this machine will have to set this card up this also has a eight two eight pins connection so not a six and an eight it has an eight and an eight Which I think is really just for the all the lights and fans on this thing. Let's get it boot up. Yeah, test the crappiest 1070. I hear you. I don't have a crappy 1070 here. Unfortunately. I have a... Uh, I only have two 1070s in this whole thing. And all the cards I have. So you can see the whole thing lights up RGB. Just make sure it's set it up because I, I did not have this card in this machine before. Looks like it set it up fine. Launch precision. Maybe. I think it's still processing it. There you go. Now we're going to try this without touching this first. What do we want to do first? Zcash or Ethereum? You zoom in on that screen here. Get on the screen. You guys want to test Zcash or Ethereum first? Heath? I think we're even six and six. I'm going to flip a coin. We'll do Ethereum. We're going to do them both. We'll do Ethereum first. Stock settings. Not touched anything. This is the latest NVIDIA driver, too, that's on this machine. Twenty six point eight out of the box. So 26.8 out of the box, no, no settings adjusted. So let's, let's take this thing into the stratosphere. Let's do 150 on the core. Let's do 400 on the memory. Let's see if it can handle that. The 
this is more just a speed test first and then we'll look at power and all that stuff on them power consumption on this right now under a load and that's with it over that's what the power settings maxed out is about a hundred and uh, 40 150 about 150 watts right now so we're at 29.8 28 29.8 mega hash on this 1070 just can we zoom in on that screen a little more Yeah, there you go, there you go. We're going to zoom in a little bit. Not bad at all on the 1070. And that's with the clocks all the way up too with the uh, power target and stuff thing using about 150 watts. What do you guys think? We should take it up more? Want to see the hardware info on it? <laughs> no airs so far. Yeah, we got no errors. All right. We'll do 800 on that. 175. I'll stair step this because I think the GPU clock's going to die before the memory. So I just doubled the overclock on the memory. Boom! Did not like that. So we'll take we'll take the clock down a little on the memory. We're gonna go ahead and uh, I'll take instead of going trying to be super aggressive with it, take it straight to 800. I'll take it to like 600, and I'll keep the GPU clock just like maybe another five. Because I think the GPU clock's what's maybe doing it to me. Using the memory, you can go kind of high on these. We'll go one sixty there. We'll go five fifty here. Let's see if we can handle that.
Brian Allen, you can only use eight, buddy. Wow, almost 31. Adam, you can use the two M2 drives, but you don't want to go over nine unless you have Linux, is what I mean. You can go two M2 drives with with uh, a six card rig, but if you do a seven seven slots plus two M2 drives to nine, you're gonna have to use Linux. I take the fan out. Well, I killed the GPU miner. Did not like when I played uh, with the resettings there. But I got the fan all the way up now. These fans are like turbo props. You guys can probably hear that on the. Uh, uh, no, Linux can run more. If you watch uh, some. There's some videos for some Russians doing it with like 14 GPUs and uh, using the expanders. And uh, we haven't tried it yet, but I, I finally got my M2 drive pieces in, and that's going to be next week. That was kind of my surprise for next week for you guys. Here, I'll show you guys with the fans all the way up. We're at just at... So if the machine was about 30... 38, let's just say the machine's 40, you're looking at 160 watts for that card with the fans at max. So this thing was actually at about 109, so the fans added 10 more watts of power. Now we'll link all these 1060s and 1070s. If you guys are going out and purchasing, hit those links. You're doing us a solid when you do that. We'll, uh, from our affiliate side, so uh, we're doing this for you guys, and that's the way you guys can hook us up for helping you guys with this stuff. So we'll put, we'll post all the links to these 1060s, 1070s, uh, and that's why I'm trying to review all the different ones. This is the Zodiac. This is a real high expensive one. I mean. That's great that this thing's doing 31, but this is an expensive card. Um, but it's pretty rock solid. I mean, from from a construction standpoint, this is like one of the more uh, higher end cards. It's staying real cool. I mean, obviously I got the fans way up, but I mean it's holding with just its fans. It's holding 52 Celsius. I didn't even think I needed it at that high. I think it was in the 60s with uh, without the fans at max. I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to switch this back to auto. We're going to apply on that. We're going to take this up just a hair more. I think we can get 650 out of it. Maybe 165. I'm really pushing it. We'll see. See if we get another another blue screen. Yeah, it's the Ant uh, the Ant Extreme. There's a difference. We'll get that link on you. Yeah, we'll lower power target here in a second. I want to see if we can lock in a real high rate, and then I'll take the power target down. Let's see what we can get it to.
Almost 32. And that's a 1070, folks. That is not a 1080. That is a 1070. This guy right here. Yeah, we should. No, I did. Okay. It's that card. Yeah, it's that card. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's that card. Yeah, the fan's barely on it. The fan's at 10%, and it's holding 62 Celsius. So with the power target up, we're looking at 190s. Yeah, I think they went a little crazy on the cooler. It does not need this crazy of a cooler for what's going on here. Good question on the hardwares. Let's do that. Let's run that and see if there's any errors. Zero errors. No errors and no artifacts. Yeah, one of our very first videos, uh, we built, we show you guys how to build some cases. If you guys think it's valuable, I'll take you guys through a video next week and I'll, we'll build a case, we'll do a time lapse of it and then I'll explain on how to build them pretty cheap and easy. We'll do a, like a modern 2017 version. If you think that guys will help you, we'll walk you guys through on how to build a case again. The GPU in the description is only two fans. Oh, is that a three fan? That's the three fan uh, amped edition. Oh, wow. Extreme. Extreme. You said amped, and I did the Yeah, Guntis did a pretty good review on uh, building a case. He kind of took our original old design, made a newer video with it. But if you guys think it'll be good, we'll make a we'll make a newer one. So yeah, this uh, this card looks pretty good. You think we should try it a little a little faster? You know, we haven't even got to Zcash yet to see what. The, you know what? Before we try to blow this thing up, let's check Zcash. Yeah, I'm using Claymore for Ethereum. And that was actually Claymore 9.3, not even 9.4. There's four of them. Yeah, we just updated the description. The Zodiac. I lost. It looks like I lost uh, clock settings here. I think the. I think when I closed Ethereum out, it, it kind of it took a plunge. I'm gonna give it a quick reboot, and then we'll uh, we'll try Zcash at those settings.
Yeah, I think we we just upgraded the uh, updated the description of that card. The Amp Extreme Edition. There's like three different versions of that card. This is the extreme. This is the the top one. We'll try Zcash right now with those same settings and see what we can get. Yeah, hit my uh I think we had what 165 and this was 650 I think that's where we were at I'm using ZEC minor What do you think this thing would do? Oh, nothing. It executed. It was too much for it. Let's look here. Let's do 160. Let's do 600. Apply. Exit it with code 77. Five fifty, one fifty, It looks like the 550. It likes the 550. We'll we'll try to stair stuff it here in a second. Woo! That thing's moving for a 1070. Four hundred ninety souls, four hundred ninety-eight, almost five hundred on this ten seventy. That's not too bad. We'll check power usage. Oh, an accident! It's too much for it. So unless unless it holds stable, it's not. It doesn't count. We're gonna take the memory down to five hundred. We're going to take the GP clock to 40. Kinda, yeah. Solutions per second. It's just Zcash is different than Ethereum. Different, different types of uh, algorithms. So stepping it down some takes it to 488 versus almost 500. It's using more power though, and it exited. So it's, it is not as it's Zcash. At least that minor. It might be that minor too. I'm gonna try Nice Hash as minor. 
We're going to do it a different Zcash miner versus me stepping this down. We're going to go in here to the nice hashes miner. This is version 17512. We're going to go to settings here. Well, somebody gave us a, Z, uh, a uh, super chat. Yeah, say thanks to Napoli. Who was it? Oh, Natalie, thanks for the super chat. We really appreciate it. All right, we're going to do this with Nice Ashes Miner. It's got to do a quick little benchmark. We're going to have it start mining right after that. This will take a second. Again, for folks just joining, we are trying to benchmark and test a 1070 right now which is the Amped Extreme Edition. And those settings still might be too aggressive for it. It's working, those settings are working fine on Ethereum. They are not liking Zcash. We'll step it down a little more. If it doesn't, uh, Try to reboot, cancel. I'll tell you what, we're going to go to default. It's just a 50 and a 100. Apply, and I'm going to see. This might be, this might have killed the driver when it crashed the very first time, and I'm just validating it right here with going to a. Save and close. Yes. We're going to let this benchmark again. I'm kind of flying through this, and once I get it stable, guys, I'll, I'll walk through exactly what I've just done. But what I'm trying to do is trying to use this miner, this nice hash miner, to see what we can get in Zcash with this thing. And I'm, it, we hadn't set this up with the uh, 1070 yet, so it does a quick benchmark and then it'll start mining right after that after about 10 seconds here here we go yeah it was the settings it looked like that we had so this nice hash miner is essentially mining zcash but it auto converts it to bitcoin it'll tell you what this this card earns a day so So it looks like we're holding 413, 4, 411 souls at this bear, just over stock. This card's getting a little over 400 souls, which right now is equivalent to $5.10 a day. 512. This one card, which is mining Zcash and then converting it to it's it goes to the exchange and auto converts it to Bitcoin. And it shows right there at about 510 a day on, on 410 hash. So it's using 160 watts. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop this. Shots on the miner. We're gonna step this up to 200. We'll step this up to 300. Actually, we're not gonna go 200 on the GPU. We're going to go 100 on the GPU, 300 on the memory, and we'll see if this miner can handle that. Looks like it is. So it's up to 420, 430. We'll let this run for a second and see if it's stable. Yeah, I'll, te I'll test a 1080 Ti next week and a 1050 Ti, um, both of those. So we'll do, uh, 
we'll test the whole gamut on them. But this 1070 is actually impressing me. I actually was not going to test this. Um, and I'm glad you guys talked me into it. I had no idea Zodiac built a beast. Zotac. Or Zotac. I keep calling it Zodiac because it's amazing. Yeah, 430 souls. This is a 1070. So, I mean, it's... Run! Thanks for the super chat, bro. Nice super chat. No problem. You have any issues with that BIOS, you let us know. We'll take care of it. Did we get a black edition? We got the black edition and the other one. So both of the, all those BIOSes will be uploaded right after this video tonight. So we'll be able to pull them. There's five of each. So yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like that's holding up fine. We're going to stop that. We're going to go to 125. I think right around 150 is where we start losing this. We'll go to 400. What we're trying to do is show you guys if you get this, this particular 1070, kind of what a, at least a benchmark for you to kind of shoot for without having to do a lot of research. You can kind of go straight to it. Now you notice I left the power target this whole time down. So I'm, we'll see what the, the, the power usage is, but it's been a little lower than what we were showing earlier because we're not trying to put, really push the power on it. So essentially we're almost at 440 souls. It's at 2, 212, so you're looking at about 175 watts for the card. 170 is what it's saying right now. 175, 170, and then the rest of that system, system power usage. Again, that's for Zcash. That's about $5.40 for one of these cards. If you're just using nice hash as miner and you're paying it straight to Bitcoin, you're, you're essentially getting roughly 2.2 uh, millibits a day. Um, and I'll show you what that kind of looks like. So if you click here, check my online stats. Right now, I had a few machines running. I have roughly 1,000 souls right now running. And if I do this, you can kind of see, here, let me do the display overall. So projected uh, on 1,000 right now, daily income, this is the projection based on 1,000 soul, or at least 1,100 souls. It's about $11 a day, 76 a week, $300 a, a month, which is a .1 one three bitcoin on a thousand so if this th these cards are putting out four four thirty bring the old trusty at, at the current time date ratio four thirty eight let's just say times seven you're looking at about 3,066 souls. So almost three times what that is. So you're looking at 1,200, roughly 1,200 and some change. Three to four times, you're looking at about $1,000 a month of generation on, on one rig. Not too bad. I mean, that's about two and a half months to pay, pay it off if you're getting these bigger, more expensive cards. And that's at locked. That's at the current pricing right now. So, I mean, for a little bit there, I had one of the big rigs pointed to it, and I was earning. Uh, I think it was back here. Let me do a three three day. Here we go. That's when I had one of the bigger rigs pointed to it. Uh, here it was. This is what I pointed uh, 
the seven card rig to it. It was earning almost, uh, so this was a seven card rig and two other, two other cards. I was, I, I had about five, almost 5,000 souls. I had 4,400 on that one rig, the seven card 1080 rig. And it was earning 0 0.046 BTC, essentially, uh, in that whole day. So not bad at all on Zcash. That's why you're seeing a lot of people go with these NVIDIA cards as a supplement since they can't get the AMD cards. You know, and you don't have to sell that. I, I always say, you know, sell what you need to sell to pay for your power or pay back all your rigs. But, you know, this is, we're not only just upholding the network, we're holding the, uh, you know, we're we're collecting what we can to hold. And, and, you know, one of these days, maybe it's, you know, it gets mass adoption and it, it's going to be a nice increase for everybody. You know, this is like the oil extraction. We're the rigs. We're out there grabbing the raw extraction for people to make petrochemicals out of it. You know, all these all these developers making software that's going to sit on that blockchain, the supply chain stuff that's going to go on. You know, we're 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 doing the the mining and holding the uh, you know getting the currency out there for the exchange for them to put in their wallets to run those applications at runtime. So we're doing our service as other folks are doing their service. Yeah, so this thing looks like it's about stable at 440. So I wanted to do one more last test here. I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to apply that. We're going to hit start. Now what I've done is I've taken the power target down to 60% with the same overclocks. And what we're going to see is how much power does that drop and how many souls do we end up getting? Look at that, 442. Still getting 442. And we're dropping down from 230, 210, something like that, to 190. So we dropped about 25, 25 watts or so. And you can see that also in the card where it's not running two, uh, 170. We dropped about 25 watts. And we're still getting 441. So dropping that power target is critical. Yeah, so the, the, the turnaround, it really comes down to what you can get these NVIDIA cards for. And, you know, not a lot of people, I mean, I think a lot of people will start seeing this video and a couple more that we make this week or this next week, and the, the NVIDIAs will start getting picked up. Um, so if you're thinking about it, you're on the fence for a rig and you can't get AMD cards, um, the 1070s are obviously a pretty good pick right here. But the, the, the 1060s, which I think we've killed this, uh, well, I mean, this thing's still running, it's still doing real well. You can see 143, or 147 watts of power usage there. We're down to 170 here. Now that it's settled, 180. Mind you, remember 30 to 40 watts, so that's the, the actual uh, board. So 150 watts, we're back down to that, that target area of where the AMD cards are at right now. And I mean, we're at 440 with this card, so it's doing real well. We're going to stop on that. We're going to shut this down. And I'm going to put the 1060 back in there before we call it a night tonight. And let you guys see the 1060 for some of the folks that didn't see the 1060. It's a much better buy. I mean, this card's still in the $400, I think, range. I didn't look at the, what the real price right now on this Amped Extreme is. But it's cool to have the top card on the 1070s, but if you can get something that's cheaper and gives you pretty close to the same performance. The Amped Extreme is 423 on Amazon right now. Yeah, the Amped Extreme is 423. And this thing's huge. You're going to have to build a massive rig. I mean, do you see how big this is? This is a seven card rig that we built. 
I could probably get maybe five or maybe six, but they're going to be pretty close to each other. I mean, this thing is massive. Again, I could put seven cards in this ring. This is, I'm going to put five in this one. I mean, it's a three din triple card. See how thick? I mean, let, let's put a, a 580. One of the newer 580s, RX 580s from NVIDIA, or from uh, AMD. Uh, let me flip them around. I mean, it's... Let me get it up to there. That way you can see kind of how much longer that card is. I mean, this is already a long card. It's a, it's a huge card in thickness. I mean, in triple din. No joke. There it is. I mean, here's a funny one. 460? <laughs> what? I mean, jeez. That's pretty funny. So we'll put the 470 over, uh, the 1070 over there. We're gonna put the, this is the 1060. We did this earlier at the start of the live stream. We had like 40 people on. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put this back in. We're gonna take the clock settings a little higher. Um, how can I use the server P in El Cheapo PSU? Uh, I will send you a link. We have a, we have a setup like that of how we converted it. You, bottom line, you're gonna have to get a converter. Um, they do make converters for those. I'll, I'll send you a link. It depends what PSU you're talking about, but you can use those like 2000 watt HP power supplies um, that are out there uh, to save you some money on these. Uh, yeah, so it'll be a converter. You can use it. You can use the converter, and then into one of the slave connectors, and then everything works. Because it'll go from the its default connector to a the, to a normal 24 pin that you'll plug into the slave controller. So we're gonna do this 1070 or this 1060. Yeah, we had a server. We had a server power supply. It was like a 2,000 watt HP. And how to use a converter on it, and that was more around the, like the the three ninety X days where you just had to use two power supplies because it was just they just used too much energy. A sixteen hundred didn't cut it. We don't use any of the server power supplies anymore. We just don't need them. We don't need two thousand watts of power at all. Maybe on an eight card rig that's using a lot of juice. This is a single eight pin on this this 1060. These little things do not like when they're brand new. They really don't like to stay together. The six to an eight pin, actually kind of a pain in the butt. There we go. All right. So again, we're going to take this 1060 and show what it does. You can get these all the way down. This is the three gig model for people who want to know. They do make a six gig model. We plan on testing that next week. The six gig model. I don't anticipate a ton of change on that. Just more that you have six gig. Um, the six gig is a little more expensive. The three gigs you can get all the way down to 189 dollars each. We'll try to link some some links for you guys. But uh, $189 and you're going to see what this thing can do. Let's make sure we don't have those crazy settings from the 1070 in there. I don't think we had it set to start with Windows, but we'll check. This card lights up. When it's, when it's under idle, it shows white LEDs. It goes red once it's got a load on it, which is kind of cool. But um, We'll start default clocks real quick. Just make sure it's good to go. Actually, we'll start Ethereum default clocks again. If you were on, if you were here earlier, you've seen this. I'm sorry you're seeing it again. We got a lot more people on. I want to make sure they can see this. Again, GTX 1063 gig, 
default clocks out of the box. This is equivalent to if you bought this and just put this into an Ethereum rig running Claymore 9.3. This is essentially what you're going to be getting out of it. Using the latest NVIDIA drivers, the drivers that were just out here. So 19.1 with no overclocks out of the box. 19.1 on Ethereum. This is PNY. That is this card right here. PNY is the brand. It's the XLR8. It's overclocked. Stock. The 1060. 3 gig dual fan. So it looks like we're at 19.1. We're going to shut that down. We're going to leave the power target the same. We're going to take this up to 125. Actually, we're going to take that a little lower. This is a 1060. It's not going to have bend processors, which means the lesser of the barrel usually. We're going to take a 75 there. We're going to take this to 125. We're going to apply that. We're going to leave the fan on stock. We're going to go back and try Ethereum. Again, we'll take it through Zcash right after this. And it's good because this is not the top tier 1060. This is kind of like the average 1060 out there. The average 1060 uh, 3 gig. You know, we should have looked at the power before. Um, before I overclocked it, and we'll go back to that. So 10.8 looks like we raised it almost, uh, almost a full mega hash. But right now we're running about 129. So we're we're averaging almost 100 watts on this card. 100 watts at 19.8. So if you had seven cards, you're looking right at a little over 700 and. 750 watts because you got you got the extra power from the risers um so you're just at 800 watts on a seven card rig at this rate right now and then we haven't dropped the power target yet so looks like 19.8 on ethereum that way let's take this to 125 let's take this to 200 I'm going to give it a 5% overclock here. And then we're going to start this. Let this run for a second. I think we just got a super chat. Hey, thanks, Derek. You got a question, buddy? I'll get anything answered for you. Uh, the link, so it's the Claymore 9.3. We'll add it to the description. So just check back on this video. We'll make sure that you have, 9.4 is the latest. We'll actually link that one, but this is the minor. It does both a th it does both NVIDIA and it does um, AMD cards. So it looks like we just broke 20.2 with this card with the 125 and the 200 megahertz on the offset there. So again, if you're brand new and you're watching this, if you built this and you were just gonna put a couple cards in even in your home computer right now, and you had a 1060, you download this software, you point it to your wallet, you do a few settings with EVGA Precision, and you're setting your hashing right out of the gate. You don't need a rig like this, you can do it right out of your home computer with a, with a 1060 like this. You can see right now it's holding 59 Celsius, the fan's running at 47%, there's no other fan on this machine right now. So it's using the stock fan, NVIDIA runs a lot cooler than a lot of these AMD cards. We're at 130 watts full system power right now. Again, 38, about 38 watts is the system. So you're right about a little over 90, 95 watts right now for the card. And it's doing 20.2. And again, this is a $189 card. You can get this card down to 189 bucks in some places. So not too bad for 20 mega hash. We're gonna step. We're gonna step. Keep stepping this up until essentially we kill it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and 
bring the tower target up. As I start to take this up more, I want to make sure that I have enough juice to run the overclock, and then we step the tower power down. Uh, we're going to go to, I don't think it'll do much more than 145 on the core. We'll do 300 on the memory and see if it can hold it. Now the NVIDIA, usually when you apply this, it takes most of the settings. It's just when it goes to put a load on it, it'll die if it can't handle it. You'll blue screen, it'll freeze the machine up, it'll do something of that nature. Usually you get it by now, but we'll see once it holds a load for a second. We're up to 131 on power. 132. We're almost to 21 mega hash. So this card's almost hitting 21 mega hash. This is the surprise of the industry right now, guys. I mean, this is, I mean, I know some people have already discovered this and you know, we're definitely not the first ones breaking through with it, but really to kind of bring it to the audience and stuff and kind of show it live, uh, you know, what it, what it's taking you you see me put this just in the rig and just fire it up fire it up with the software not a lot of modification no bios changes on this and this is essentially what they're getting so if you can't find amd cards right now i hate to tell it to the the gaming brethren out there um but i tell you if ethereum's price goes to three four hundred dollars i don't i think all gaming across the country is going to cease across the whole world because it just doesn't make sense not to be part of this thing because every every cards every cards victim for this now. You know the the, the industry is going to have to give us a, a mining specific card to get us out of the gaming world. That's more efficient. Yeah, so I mean this thing looks like it's holding at 64 Celsius. It's under 51 percent fan speed. We'll try Zcash here in a second. I'm really just trying to get it all the way up to where I can where it can handle Ethereum. We'll see if we can. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave the GPU clock where it's at. I'm gonna see if it can handle, I'm kinda of going for the beans here. 600 megahertz increase on the memory. Twenty-two point three. Let's check the power. Still holding pretty low. One thirty-nine. Thirty-nine fifty. I don't think so. I'm gonna look and see real quick, but the. Uh, I think that's an 1150, right? Uh, that's 1151 cable, cable, uh, yes, that will work. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a cabulate. Yeah, we're going to check those memory errors. If there are any. I got no Windows errors. Nothing. Holding it like a boss. 22.3 out of that uh, PNY. <clears throat> so what we're going to try now So we're going to go 700 we're going to take the power target down to 80. We'll end up stepping the power target down to 60, but <clears throat> I want to stair step it a bit. So 
So we're still holding the 22.7, which is good. It dropped it from about 136 down to 129. We're going to take it a little further. And then we're going to try, we'll try the uh, Zcash right after this. So you guys are getting a good benchmark of what the, the 1063 gig is doing. Again, if you cannot find those AMD cards, you know, we're going to put those links out on our, on our uh, description. You want to, if you're going to be picking up a rig through at least Amazon, you can do us a solid, put, put them, click through that link. And if you're putting together a, you know, a four card, six card rig, I mean, this is pretty, a pretty good alternative if you can't find AMD cards right now. I mean, it's not busting in the 28s, but you're using less energy and the cost is pretty comparable to the... So we dropped a little bit here. 22.3, but pretty significant drop in power. I mean, we're almost now... Now we're at 70 watts. 70 watts on that on that card usage and still getting Not bad, not bad at all. The 1060 continues to impress. Yeah, it's not moving. I mean, it's it's staying 103. And then remember, this this board's using about 40. So that's almost 60 watts. That's crazy. 60 watts at 22.4 mega hash. This might be a winner. When do you think three gigabyte might not be enough? We'll do the math on three gigabyte. We'll put it on the uh, description. But right now, I believe it was still nine to. Uh, 12 months out before that if not a little longer I mean it, ethereum just hit 2 gig about six months ago eight months ago something like that um, and actually not even that two gig just fell off like yeah I guess it was about six to eight months ago I think the dag I have to look and see what the dag is right now but I thought it was only like 2.15 gig the zodiac was eight gig uh, the, uh, the, the, our Zotac, Zotac might actually have a 3 gig uh, 1062, yeah. Yeah, this is crazy power. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to step this up just a little more. We'll see if we can handle eight, 850. There is no proof of stake date for Ethereum. I think that they're gonna, it's gonna be, if anything, it's looking like it's gonna go hybrid before it goes proof of stake, like kind of like Dash is. We'll see if it does or not, but there's gonna be probably a, quite a bit of discussion and people will have a really good idea before they go, oh, come on, 22.999, give us the 23. Where's it at? So we're still hovering 103, 104. Yeah, rip gamers for the 1060s. Anybody, if anybody watches this video, you guys share this video out and get the word out. This is uh, there's gonna be a run on all the 1060s in the market right now. Cause I mean, I, I'm telling you guys, this this power rate. At 60 watts a card popping off almost 23, that's pretty sick. If you can get these cards for $198. We'll see if this, uh, this thing has some more headroom. All the way over, boys. The meter is maxed. 1,000. What's the over under that this will work? The 1060, is it the engine that could? 
thousand megahertz overclock on the memory. It's taken the load so far. Still at 103. I don't know. Hasn't given us a number yet. Let's we'll see. Can you show the box on this again? I don't know if I linked the right thing in the description. Yep. It's the uh, PNY GeForce 1060 XLR8. Overclock gaming. 23.6. Almost 24. I'm going to let this run for a cool minute because I don't believe it. I'm going to bring up the hardware sensor. I want to see if there's errors. No errors. Not dumping any memory errors. Share accepted. It's not giving me any red no shares. That is a slider all the way over to a thousand, 145 in the megahertz, and the power holding 104, 60 watts, 60 watts for this card, 23.55 is 60 watts. It's a sleeper. PNY built a sleeper here. I don't think I could take it up anymore. I mean, I could take the G the GPU clock is what's going to make you overclock. You usually most of the time make you blue screen because it just the, the the actual core GPU can't handle a heavy over heavy overclock. Wow, it's sixty percent target. That thing is just rocking. That's just nuts. So let's try. Now I highly doubt at that level of an overclock on Zcash is going to work. Is that a six gig card? It's a three gig card. I'm not seeing the X. There, there's not a lot of three gig cards left. The six gig card's about it. We're going we're gonna to be testing the 6 gig card next week. The 3 gigs are not the XLR8, they're just regular like the... Yeah, this is a, it's a rare XLR8 3 gig. We're going to let this test mine. We'll see. I, I, I'm going to be impressed if this card actually lets, it, lets Zcash go through with a 1000 megahertz overclock. We'll see if it passes its test. It's mining. Holy crap. Two hundred and sixty souls. Two sixty one. Yeah, right there. It's telling you the wattage of the car. Seventy one right now with Zcash. Still the same, one oh three. For the total system, so that card's using 71 watts, 70 watts, 260 souls. It's about three dollars a day if you're doing Zcash and convert it straight to uh, Bitcoin. Which Ethereum miner are you using? This one is uh, the Ethereum miner is Claymore 94. This is Nice Hash version 1.7.5.12. We'll link 
in the description that uh, I'm making sure Zcash miner 1.7.5.12 that is the one that we'll link into the description for you guys to get and what I'm doing in there I'm gonna stop this real quick so it's 263 is where it looks like it's holding 264 it's still slowly going up um, so on this miner when you're in it you can you highlight the card that you want to do it has the CPU and the car and the cards so if you had six cards you'd have a scroller here you hit settings on that which takes you to the settings for the card you go into devices and algorithms and you highlight the actual GPU you'll have several GPUs in here if you have a six card or seven card rig in this these are all the different algorithms that it, that this miner will process and do you do, it's just whatever you have selected to enable I uncheck all the other types of coins. This is like X11, Pascal, Dagger Hashimo, which is uh, Ethereum, uh, Lyra, NeoScript. You want equal hash, uh, equal hash, which is the Zcash. So you just have that one checked. You save and close it. It saves all the settings. And then when you hit and start this, it'll go through and it'll just use Zcash. If you leave all those checked, nice hash goes out there and it's like a like a it'll look at what's the most profitable and it'll always switch between what's the most profitable because all you're doing is mining whatever and you're converting it to bitcoin automatically to the bitcoin address you put in here so essentially it doesn't matter what you're mining it takes the most highest profitable at the time and converts it to bitcoin so it simplifies it if you're using like an nvidia card if you're just wanting to go straight to Bitcoin versus hold the currency. Now I like holding the, the Ethereum, I like holding the Zcash, um, but if you wanted to mine just purely for Bitcoin, you could use something like this miner here, and then it'll sit there and just chew through it and auto sell and, and pay you back out in distribution here. And if you check your stats online by clicking that, it'll show your next estimated payout. So for us on this particular one, this has just been our test rigs testing. This is the when we're testing out stuff, we throw it to this just to see what it does against the different miners. And essentially on 6.6, we're gonna get paid out $130 USD, which is equivalent to 0 0.544 Bitcoin at this point in time. So that's essentially what this miner does for you. But I like doing it from a benchmark standpoint to see what it actually outputs. So right now this card's earning about $3.18 a day. It's not. It's only using 60 or 70 watts of power. So you know you get seven of these things. You're, it's pretty decent. Seven. Well, let's do the math here again. Calculator. You're looking at seven times 263. You're looking at an 1841 soul machine. At um, 75 times 7 plus let's just say 40 you're looking at a, all you're looking right underneath 650 watt power supply or uh, there's actually a little more involved in that because you got riser power too so you're looking if you're on a 750 watt power supply for all these if you can get enough of these dongles that's going to be your problem is you'll probably have to step up at least to an 850 to have enough eight pins uh, for six cards. You're gonna have to use an adapter if you wanna go to seven, thereby you're putting yourself almost into a thousand watt power supply. Even though you're gonna only use a little less than, a little more than half of it. Yeah, so about two of these is one, that's a good way to look at it. Two of these are essentially one 1070. So, if you're paying $200 a card of this, then it might make sense just to get the 1070 and just buy one card. Because um, the 70 times 2 is essentially the 150. So, yeah, the 1070 is essentially, I mean, it's almost an even split on that upgraded 1070 running a higher uh, piece. It all comes down to price point, though, and how many you need to buy. Uh, or how I many you can buy um, and what you can find. So.
the 1060 to 1070 are looks like they're split so yeah so I mean that's that's kind of the gamut tonight I mean uh I want to I want to get this wrapped up for we can get these bioses out for you guys uh, I'll answer some questions uh, for a few minutes before we wrap it up and uh, next week we'll be doing the 1050 ti and the 1080 ti so uh we'll get this hot posted out there you guys can check out the you know just rewind go back to it and uh take a look through it we'll get the uh, bioses posted and uh you know we thank a lot for you guys a few folks that did the super chat we actually use that to actually you know make the channel better get the right equipment and stuff to make sure you guys are can see this stuff right now our internet at this particular place is uh upload is horrible the download is spectacular um but here in a little bit hopefully we'll get uh moved over to an area that we have fiber and we'll have a, a we'll go 1080p 60 frames per second uh with a better camera and that hopefully should give you a lot better clear stream the five meg stream is just horrible on the upload. I'll take some of these questions though. What do you guys got here? We'll see. Uh, 1080 Ti is super expensive right now. The only reason why you'd really want to go with a 1080 Ti in my opinion, because you're going to spend like 700 bucks on it, is if you're looking to go long uh, with mining with it and then you could turn around and sell it at a later date you pay 700 for it now you'll be able to get like 375 for it in two and a half years um, otherwise I'd say find the best deals you can find on the 1070 uh, and if that's too expensive of a price point then the 1060s are your best bet it's really predicated on price and time that you're going to be using it ethos does not support nvidia cards from what I, at least the last time i checked it doesn't there's not a lot of nvidia support on the linux side there are some there are some out there that actually will do it i mean i guess technically we can try we can try to get uh, ethos loaded up on one of the machines and I'll see if the if switching the miner from the ethos native client to Claymore if it'll support it it may do it there but I don't I don't know if Claymore's uh, Linux distro actually uh, has the Nvidia part on it I haven't checked any of the old cards on Zcash. I have some old 280Xs and these are these six over here behind me are uh, these are 390Xs. There's six of them over here. We're thinking about re, re getting these back alive because um, they're just a lot of the older 390s we're not using right now because of the power. But right now it's almost stupid not to. Vega is going to be interesting um, because it's going to have HBM memory, which is kind of like what uh, the Pro Duo has. I mean, it's going to be. Do you think you can run the Amped uh, 1070 with one pin connector? It's a good question. I don't. I haven't tried. It'll take 30 seconds. Is that worth your guys' time? You want me to try the 1070 real quick without with one 8-pin connected? 
Would you guys want to see if that works? Let's give it a whirl. Let's see if the old Zodiac can handle. I mean, it was hardly using any power, so I don't. I doubt it needs the one. It really comes down to if it gives me a warning saying, "Hey, you're you're, you're dumbass, plug in your second one." We'll see if it does. This is such a heavy card. Uh, let's get this guy under here. I set this rig up as just for these live streams for we could have something quick, kind of like a test bench, so we could put, get this stuff switched out where I didn't have to mess with that PC. Now this is the last, this is the last live stream until next week too, guys, because I'm going out of town this weekend. Actually taking the fam down to the old BBT fam. So we'll have a pretty cool vlog video from it, but we're gonna go out to a lake um, and try to enjoy some R and R a little, and then we'll come back. Oh, I plugged in both. That's habit. That is habit. Okay, so we're gonna try back one first only and we'll flip it around if it doesn't work we'll try we'll try it the flipped way around to see which one if it's a master slave setup on the uh on the power that's a good sign the first one it's not yelling at me again i got the i got the the actual video plugged into the board so um most of these I plug into the HDMI on the motherboard itself versus you plug, plugging it into the card. So let's get this loaded up. No hardware support detected. That's the first sign that that might have not let it. Let's look at uh, device manager and see if we have anything under with an issue. device reported a problem so we got a 43 on this code 43 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut it down I'm gonna switch the I'm gonna switch the power around and then if that's not working then I'm gonna try to just play with the driver real quick and see if I can get it to work it's off now in Windows we may have this problem because Windows is gonna look and do kind of a power on self test on the card to see if certain things are done. Um, Linux, usually using one connector like that, it's not as strict. So we'll see. You still got the code 43 on that. See if we can fix it this way. Okay. No. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's liking it in Windows. It doesn't mean that it wouldn't work in Linux with a, a Linux build. Um, but out of the gate, it doesn't look like it's going to work with Windows. I'm going to shut this down one more time. I'm going to plug them both in and make sure I just didn't have a, a weird error after flipping between the two. Where it didn't like going from the 1060 back to the 1070 type of thing, so this is kind of doing the whole uh, I call it kind of a perturbation test where you're trying all the different variables. So we tried it both front to back, and now we're going to try it with both plugged in to make sure I get rid of the four air uh, code 43 air. So again, I'm just going to device manager to look at this.
Well, this is a good thing because I'm still getting a code 43 error. Because both are plugged in now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uninstall it. I'm going to scan, let it set it back up, make sure it works, make sure it hashes, and then I'm going to pull, pull a cable again. All right. So with me uninstalling it, I just right clicked, I hit uninstall, it dropped it back down to other devices. I hit scan for hardware up here, which went out, grabbed the driver, and then now reset it without the exclamation point. Now it says it's working properly. So let's go ahead and just fire up real quick just to make sure it sees it. If it does, I'm gonna shut it back down. I'm gonna pull a cable and just see if it is. So the switch between the 1060 and the 1070 is probably what that air was. It probably wasn't indicative of having the power not plugged in. But we're gonna check here real quick. Looks like it's actually gonna work. So we're gonna shut this down. So I'm just trying to step you guys through if we end up figuring out this, that the problem wasn't the fact that the power was unplugged. It was the fact that it's just switching between the 1060 to 1070 and kind of threw it off. <clears throat> 268 for anybody wanted to know what this thing does stock without anything done to it. Almost 27 mega hash. So shutting it down now that we got it fixed and again I'm gonna do the same process I did before I'm gonna pull the first one let the back one only be the only one plugged in and we're gonna reboot it yeah this is Zotac Zotac Amped Extreme huh? 1070 Nice. A purple air. It's a purple screen, not a blue screen. Ah, it's pink. So I'm going to try the back one. Or I'm going to try the front one. See if this does it. Uh, this is the Z270. The motherboard that's in this computer right now is the Z270 AR Prime. And no, the person that was asking, was that the PNY? No, that was, this is the Zotac, the Zotac 1070. So, plugged into the front, the front uh, eight pin. Let's we'll see if it's code 43 again. It is. So let's uninstall it again. Let's scan for hardware. Let's see if it fixes itself. It fixed itself for a second. It went right back to the code 43. Yeah, I think that's kind of just telling it that it's uh, not liking it. So myth busted on that one. It needs both. There, I'm gonna pull that off because I'm not gonna keep that in this one. So no, not with Windows. It doesn't work. Cash miners was uh, was nice. Nice hash version one dot seven dot five dot twelve.
I use both uh, whatever's available, Sky Lake and Cavi Lake. So I have we don't have necessarily problems with them. I mean the processor that we're using right now in these, because I could not find anything else local and close quickly, was uh, the i3 7350K, which is way overkill. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. And the price was want one seventy nine. It was actually like one forty nine, but it's still like a hundred dollars more than I want to pay for a processor. Because usually you can get processors for fifty bucks. The ten sixty stock is is twenty one mega hash. The ten sixty overclocked is twenty three point six mega hash overclocked. Twenty three point six at sixty watts, which is crazy. So we are going to get some of those stats updated on the site. We're going to wrap this, uh, this, this live stream up. Oh, the kind of RAM, the eight gig kits, or I get four gig kits most of the time. This was an eight gig kit because they were out of four gig kits, um, which is the, uh, the two four gigs, it's the ballistics. It's just they're stable. I mean, you can use cheaper memory. I mean, I've used, uh, I mean, I used to get HyperX memory. I mean, I've gotten crucial value packs. Uh, I mean, just don't, I mean, some people use like A data and stuff. I just, I like using some kind of quality memory most of the time. I just don't like having lots of little problems with it. Um, so I usually get pretty decent quality memory. You spend a couple more dollars, but to have a st stable machine is worth it. Um, but again, this weekend, we're gonna be out of pocket, so no live streams. Um, I got a few more cards. You guys have already seen, I think, these packs. Or these ones, this is the uh, RX 580s. These are some new ones. Eight, eight gig, I think we did the four gig. RX 580s, but got some of those. Uh, maybe we'll do a retro thing next week too with uh, some old 398 gigs. Just a kind of a newer video of how those things perform. Um, and then we'll do the 1050 Ti and then the uh, 1080 Ti to kind of give a proper benchmark like this. So a lot coming next week. You know, I, I've tried to do some produced episodes, but right now the live stream seems to be where it's at. I like the interaction from you guys, and you guys can kind of see where it's at. Um, we will still do some of the produced videos. Some of those super chats you guys are giving us, I'm trying to get a, not a full-time, but at least a part-time uh, person to help me put together some of those videos to make them nice, crisp, and clean. Kind of like that motherboard video that we did for the AR. I want to do that for the TB250 and the TB350. Um, on for the BioStar, of course, we'll get the 13 PCI slot at ASRock as soon as we can get it. But I'm going to take that super chat uh, money that you guys give us, and we're going to we're going to put that to use for producing better content for you. Something that's more like that ep episode um, that's it, it's direct, it's quick, it's four or five minutes straight to the point um, to help you guys through for some tutorial stuff on more of the bio stuff. Uh, you know kind of explain what the timings, how those work, um, and you know, just try to get some more direct content, not just where you guys have to watch like a two hour live stream and find the eight, 10 bits of really critical information out of it. So that super chat money goes to something good. It goes to us helping you guys get more clear and concise videos. Um, so thank you for uh, the patient dreams on that. You guys will see that as part of the content. So. We just don't pocket any of that or anything like that. You guys see the stuff that we get for you guys uh, with it. So um, next week we'll do a live stream again. Um, and this weekend you'll, you'll I'll be responding to emails and chat and stuff. So send us stuff um, on that if you guys need something. <laughs> Literally came back with three Zodiac today. Was that before or after the live stream? Let's see. 
All right, guys. Well, I think we're going to call this at 2, two hours and 30. We'll stay in the uh, live stream chat for a little bit. Um, but we're going to go ahead and cut the video. Uh, yep. Subscribe. Check out our site, MitsubiTripping.com. That should be hopefully changed in the next few weeks here. Um, and uh, click those Amazon links if you're going to use Amazon. You're helping us out that way too.